frente a Pipo. A bunch of his warm-up drills, which he also uses for conditioning as well. And uh, the first thing we have is a, a hurdle circuit that we do. And it's just kind of taken from a, a hurdler or sprinter's workout. And uh, he goes through these probably once a week. And we'll do some running drills. He's looking for a stick right now. Normally we'll do these with uh, 10 hurdles, but for the sake of today we'll just do six. You guys can kind of get the idea. Um, Again, this is just some assistance work for the groin and uh, works on a good range of motion with his legs and helps warm him up for the movement in the ring. Obviously, Adam's using a stick across his back just to kind of let him know where his shoulders are. He's trying to hold his upper body in a solid position as possible. He doesn't want to be breaking and moving all over the place. He's really trying to hold his upper body fairly fixed while he's working with his legs. The first drill we call the walkthroughs. The second drill is uh, it's two forward, one back, two forward, one back, two forward, one back. And this is a 180 degree turn drill. so he can really loosen up his trunk and obviously you can see how that helps with his throwing. We're just using the sector 
line is a reference here. And normally we'll be on a track where we have the line going right down the straightaway. And that will kind of serve as our guide right here. On the line as much as possible. So he's starting with his left foot, his pivot foot on the line, and then his right foot, his pivot foot in the middle of the ring, should hit roughly on the line. Um, if it's landing over here, he's over rotating. Obviously, under rotating if he's over here. And let me make one point in the ring. Adam's starting position in the ring to a higher level of intensity. You know, I'll actually push harder. So it'll be, uh, it'll resemble my full technique, uh, my, my normal technique in the circle, a lot better than just doing a drill roll. So. Some people would worry about fouling. Uh, Repetitions of this type of drill work on the line here outside of the ring. And when he's going at this intensity, if we were just doing it inside the, the ring here, we have a tough board to deal with. So the possibility for twisting an ankle is a little bit high. So when he's going with this intensity that he was just doing there, near full intensity, we do that outside the ring. I always finish these drills up with circles in the circle. Some I'll do with the six, some I won't. But you'll see what Dom was talking about. So it's the same intensity, same speed uh, as I was doing with the stick, but it's a lot easier for me to stay balanced and stay in the circle with my hands here than with my hands here versus uh, with the stick. So, I told you that. Adam, Adam starts with his left foot right in the top part of the circle here. Um, I'd say most throwers, if you take a survey and just around the world, most of the around the middle, and if you actually start with the right foot, zero, the left foot way over here. Uh, Dave Laus, a uh, former thrower from the United States, American record holder, he actually started like this. And Dave Lau started out as a very good glider. Um, I think he's the only person in our history in the United States that won a college championship, which is a big title. He won it one year with the glide, and the next year with the spin. So he was a, a good all-around thrower. But he didn't, I don't think he pivoted all that well. When he hit the middle, he wasn't that good at pivoting. So the hell and the flat the pivot kind of cheated over. And he still threw down. He still threw down the right side. There's no really right or wrong place to start. It's just what's best for your situation or your, your personal technique. So obviously, if the left leg is, is at zero here, it gives you more time to sweep and rotate. You straddle the middle. So that, that's one of the advantages. Tässä on nyt puhuttiin juuri itten eroista, niin kuin huomasitte siitä lähtöasennon. Ja se määrää sitten siinä ei ole semmoista yhtä oikeaa, että haetaan sinne luontevaa tilannetta.
When you come out of the back of the ring and you come to the front, it's how to, uh, how to hold the shoulders back and land in a nice power position with the shoulders facing the back of the ring. I was looking at the video last night for the meet. I, I, I was looking at your best throw. And when your left foot touched down, your shoulders were back really well. It's a really nice position, and that's why you threw so well. And it's probably a little easier to hit this position with the glide than the spin. But if you can hit that position with the shoulders back with the spin, you really have some possibilities for a big throw. So it's a little bit harder. So this is where the left arm comes in. Coming out of the back, as the thrower enters into the middle of the ring, the cue that we use and a lot of the American throwers use is to take this arm, reach down, Pepsi. Reached out for where the Pepsi bottle is. Reaching down and across the body. So that helps keep the shoulder back to his position. It's very common sometimes for this arm to lead to be out here. If you have an open position, a very short push. I mean, back here. We have a long push. Jos haluaa saada hyödyllisintä kääntymisestä, niin täytyy saada, niin sitä ei saa avata liian nopeasti. Ja sen avaamisen yksi syy on, että vasemmat kädet vietti liian aikaisin. Toinen, mikä voi auttaa sitä pitää kiinni, on se, että on jo pointti niin katsoa, että voi vaan kääntää. Similar to what Don was saying, I, I have a slightly different approach, uh, but it's very similar. Uh, my, whole, my whole focus is keeping my shoulders parallel to the ground. It may not be exactly right, but when I'm throwing well, my shoulders stay very close to parallel to the ground. So when I'm coming around back in the circle, and I'm in, in this position here, he reaches here, and I try and reach there. So it's a little... Back. Back. Yeah. Maybe out there. And what that allows me to do, if I'm up on my toes, it allows me to get in a position where I'm really torqued, but I'm not squeezed up so much. I'm not, I'm not that I'm compacted so much. I'm pretty, I'm pretty vertical here, so I can really come out of it with just my hips driving through. Okay? If you're here, if you're reaching down here, you got to come up and into it, like that. You have two, mo two uh, you got not only to drive your hips around, but then you have to come up with it. Uh, when I'm up here, all I have to do is drive my hips around and everything unfolds naturally for me. Ja sitten todellakin, niin kuin moneen kertaan on sanottu, niin täytyy, täytyy säilyttää se, se kääntymisestä tuleva hyöty. Sitä ei saa avata liian aikaisin. Ja Adam näytti, että hänen katseen saa vielä enemmän tuolla. Hän hakee sitä vielä kauempaa sitä hyötyä. Ei saa olla liian kasassa, että se, tämän, tämän, tota, kun lähtee skruvaan sitä ylös, niin pystyy tekemään se lantio yö, niin heti ilmaisesta välivaihetta, jossa nostetaan. Ja varsinkin, jos se nostaminen tapahtuu selällä, niin se on tavattoman hidas Ja se on paljon sitä tehosta. Että sen verran jälkeen, jälkeen pystytään heti hyömään sitä lantiosta.
just going to take a few stamps. It's very rotationally oriented. And you can see there's very much a pronounced wind up with the upper body as opposed to just dropping down and really lifting with the right leg. He does lift with the, with the right leg. The main part of the throw is unwinding. But he, he wants to try to keep the hip and the shoulder as long as possible. So he doesn't want to have the hip stop and then finish with the arm. If he does, the shot will go that way. A good sand throw for Adam will be towards just to the left of center, right where the rolled up uh, part is. Yeah. 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 Uh, a certain progression that happens from the floor to the shoulder. And it starts with your foot. You turn the foot as much as you can. And the knee obviously follows. So foot, knee, hip, and then shoulder. So that's what I'm trying to do with my stand throws, is really activate this right foot. Foot, knee, hip, shoulder. Really what we're concerned about is just a warm-up system for the for the delivery at the end of the full throw. And uh, but as I said, it just so happens Adam can throw the shot pretty far this way. And that's why when he added the rotation, he adds in you know four four point four meters with the full spin is his best. <laughs> Really good stand throws, really stand throw far. Uh, an example I can think of is CJ Hunter who can stand throw, or he could, used to 19 meters, and then his full throw was 21, 21 and a half. So he's, he's adding on two, two and a half meters to a stand throw. But his stand throw wasn't from the type of delivery for the spin, it was more for the glide. So look at that and say, well, he doesn't spin very well, but actually the stand throw wasn't a real spinner stand throw. Hunter esimerkiksi työnsi hyvin tätä stand upia, eli mutta ei sitten saanut kaksi ja puoli metriä lisää siihen, ja syy oli se, että hänen tämä paikaltaan työntäminen oli juuri, niin kuin todettiin enemmän pakinnuksia. Oh, okay. 
Obviously, doing these, uh, spending a lot of time on these to help out the, the, the younger ones here and, and stuff. But we would probably spend do six to eight throws uh, with a stand in, in an actual practice. Yeah. And then we move. Not too much, maybe 
three centimeters or so, two or three centimeters. Take over a couple of Ideally, what he's trying to do is doing a little bit slower here. Suomessa on the other side. 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 Suomessa on the other and the shots are going to go out to the right side. So it's working on staying back and turning that toe all the way through to the middle. Stop. Distance, yes. We have some quick studies in the crowd here. Uh, so we're going to go here, and that's all we're going to try and do. Really keep your feet active, OK? Drive your throw with the feet, not your other body. six to ten of these and uh, all we're trying to work on is getting our uh, right foot active and making sure our feet are 
doing the work for our body, you know? That's all we're trying to work on. Sitä, että saa siihen suunnattua oikein, koska alku on tärkeä, siinä voi olla kaikki virheitä ja kun lähtee täydestä pyörähdyksestä, niin se on vaikeampi suunnata sitä valmiin. suoraan sinne ja jala- ja käden työtä voi olla samaa. Tämä on myöskin se riili, joka sitten kertoo helposti sen, että, että tämä pitäisi aika nopeasti kulkea semmoisella kiukkaa vasta aloittelijoita, eli tämä kertoo hyvin, että onko mahdollisuuksia, mutta sitten oli esimerkkiä myös, että mikään ei suuri, mutta sitä rupesi suuri. Tämä on hyvä yhteistyö. Let me talk about the pivot some more, and I'm going to reiterate again what I said in the classroom. When Adam does this drill and he steps in, and his right foot hits, if you notice, his right toe is going to be pointing towards the javelin tail right here. Eli katsotaan sitä, kuinka paljon pitää kääntyä siellä ilmassa ja jalkaa. Eli varpaat tuonne merkkiä kohti. Koska siinä ei kyllä paljon pysty yhdeksän kaasta pysty kääntymään ja huonosta asennosta ei pysty, tai pyörittää. Se on huonossa asemassa, ei voi kääntyä. Ei niin kuin se on ollut painamista molemmilla ajalla. se on kuitenkin hieno pohti kuin tämä kokonaista kuin etuuteen. Nyt se jotenkin se on parempi silleen paljon. Niin silleen, että se hakee vaan tuon liikkeen. Hyvä, että se tekee täällä. Ja varpaat osoittaa tuon siihen tulee se, että maa on Your toe is pointing here as well, but when the left foot touched down and hit the power position, this toe was maybe pointing right here. So they, they were pivoting too much on the single support, and that's going to allow the shoulders to catch up with the hip. So you're throwing together no separation. If the foot keeps on pivoting, the hip stays ahead of the shot, you get a lot more power stretch on the delivery Everything that we do out of the back of the circle, and really everything we do in the circle, uh, is trying to maximize this movement right here. We're trying to generate more distance to push on the ball. Okay? So if you slow your feet down, your upper body's not going to slow down. It's going to keep moving. So all of a sudden, instead of having <laughs> this kind of torque, you have this kind of torque because your upper body is already accelerated past your lower body. Okay. Think about it, and uh, Don did the diagram on the on the board. I'm actually going to try and drive down that line off this leg, this left leg. Okay. It might be easier to see now because we're out here. So. I'm going to come around the back to basically this position, and I'm going to drive down towards Don with this leg that way, okay? But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this right leg to pull me back center, okay? That keeps me back on line. Everybody see that? Do you see what happens there? When I drive left leg, I'm going down that direction, but then I pull this right leg across, this is a good position, right? Yes? Yes? Okay, why is this a good position? Why is this a good position? You're balanced. I'm balanced and um, separation. Okay? 
Everything about throwing is creating a separation between your hips and your shoulders. Okay? Then we get into that drill that we just did a minute ago. We're here, and all I'm going to do is stay up on this toe, stay balanced, pick this left leg up back here, and then just turn on that right foot. Okay? Is everybody seeing that? So what's 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 what are we trying to do here? What are we trying to do? Create the separation. Separation's good. Separation is good. Everybody want to say it together? Separation is good. Well, I'll say it by myself. So This is a drill we do a lot early in the season. Ed's going to do a couple so you can see from this direction. What I really want you to notice is how when he starts, how he's going to shift his weight. Shift his weight out over the left foot. You can see. Let me just, I'll tell 
only one thing that was kind of stopped, right? Wind up, and then full turn to the power position. The reason for this is normally the throwers go to do a full throw. They tend to want to look ahead and go too fast. You can't do that. You can't do this. Still finish at 360. So you have to keep your head under control as you turn. So you can look anywhere here. But you don't want to look past this plane. If you do, the shoulder is going to dip and you won't be able to finish the drill. So you look inside the arm or down the arm and get the launch. Your strong point is 
that's what you want to work. That's what you want to incorporate into your technique uh, to set up those positions. There's certain things that are always constant, and one is this separation is very, very important. So whatever you can do to maximize the separation, whether you're a glider or a rotation guy, it's probably going to be a good thing.
necessarily uh, going as fast as I can across this way, but as fast as my feet, so I may start like this, but I'll try and get it going faster, so. Is integrating with my cleans, my Olympic workouts, uh, deadlifts, and I actually do a snatch grip deadlift uh, right after I do a set of 
uh, cleans, and it's actually it's helped my power a whole lot. Um, so I'll do my cleans, and then a snatch grip deadlift. I'm sure most of you know what, it, know what that is, but it's uh, I'll do them off a box too. I'll do variations. Sometimes it's straight from here with a wide grip. Sometimes it's uh, stiff leg. Sometimes I do them off a box. Um, but it's always supersetted or uh, it's always coupled with my Olympic workout. Whether I do uh, a uh, clean workout or snatch workout. If I do a snatch workout, the next set is a stiff leg, or just a regular deadlift. If I'm doing a clean workout, I go out wide and do a snatch grip deadlift. What's the lead? Um, generally, with the uh, snatch grip deadlifts, I stay with whatever I do my cleans with. Uh, so if I'm doing a set, I may go 10 to 20 kilos heavier actually. But uh, if I'm doing like a set of cleans at 150, I'll do my uh, snatch grip deadlifts at about anywhere between 150 and 170. Um, and I'll do sets. Uh, well, this past month I've actually been doing sets of six and the cleans and sets of four and the deadlift. Uh, that the sets of six is a little bit misleading because it's a different type of Olympic lift. It's a progressive clean. Yeah. But yeah. Whereas with the, if I do a, if I'm doing a snatch workout, then I'm uh, incorporating the deadlifts. gets quite a bit heavier uh, than my snatch because I don't have a very good snatch. All right. So the first thing is, most, uh, most of us all have bad hamstring sister. Right? <laughs> and we're going to keep this left leg, keep the other leg down with the knee, and just work it back. So, yeah, so we'll just, we'll just keep working into it, and then once once it's warmed up, we'll do, we'll do some other things like that. Uh, we'll do... Okay, we'll just, we'll, we'll open, try and open up the hips and stuff like that, and then we'll work into the same thing you guys here, and we'll go out here, we'll go here as well. Go down here a little bit further. Just trying to keep working the, the range of motion. Out here. And then, everybody's favorite. This right here is uh, very good for the back and uh, good for the separation. It's important to keep this leg locked as much as you can. So you can't move it as much and, and it really stretches from here to the lower back. So that's the that's the bulk. So again, okay. Um, so um, I can take some. Yeah. Um, this is uh we got we got the uh, running back. You'll pull this leg up. Put, it, put this foot flat on the ground up here. Pull, the, uh, pull my, my leg up. And I'm going to grab underneath here to keep this. I'm, I'm not kidding when I say this. These stretches right here probably made the difference. Uh, as far, and, um, I'll be back.